let the real deal now. You're gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> what you got? You used to think you own the street. Put back your bags and your ass is dead meat. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 10 of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are a Canadian WWE podcast that, re- that discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, or on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, No Holds Bar WP, and join in on the conversation by having your questions read right here on the show. We are also available to follow on Facebook and Instagram by searching up The Lowdown Show. Or, sorry, No Holds Bar WP. All links will be in the description below on the YouTube version of our podcast. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week, I am continued to be joined by my corporate co-host. He is the boss, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Don't forget about the blissful part. Come on. Yeah, and everyone in the chat's going nuts. They heard our little 15-second botch live episode. <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I hit lot. Li- I did not know I hit the live button. <laughs> I'm sitting here getting your shit ready for the podcast. After it could have been a lot worse yeah, stuff spend- we could have been talking about. Spending like a half hour. <laughs> trying to get like the show going our mics weren't working for some reason i had everything plugged in but my my, my laptop just wasn't reading anything <laughs> like it wasn't reading any for some reason whenever we plug our mics in it would come up and say okay what kind of mic is it but it just wasn't popping up for some reason it was reading our mics as headsets or sorry as headphones meanwhile we are on headsets and I'm like, I couldn't get it configured. We were Googling the shit out of it. We found something and it actually worked after multiple attempts. So we finally got it to work. God damn. I was getting so pissed. I'm like, are we going to have to go back to the No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast Galaxy Note 3 for this episode? Terrible. <laughs> I don't even have a charge. It would have been bad. <laughs> oh, man. The behind the scenes episode, Michael Chow. Yeah, I, del- I quickly deleted it. Sorry, it's gone forever. I wish I could have kept it. No, I actually don't. You but... heard it. You heard it. It's like the leaked nudes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. <we laughs> leaked nudes that we can quickly deleted. Yep. Anyways, guys, welcome to the Lowdown Show. And I tweeted out earlier, there's uh, some big news going on with the show today. And uh, we're going to get out of the way first. But first, got to get the plugs out. We have a Patreon page for all you new listeners and old listeners that say we want or made us get a Patreon page. There's one out there. Those dollars month sports podcast. We also have a GoFundMe page that supports us getting to WrestleMania next year. Everything about that will be on each page, so I'm not going to sit here and read it to you all. So you guys can go check it out for yourselves. Um, yeah, we're restructuring the Lowdown Show. Uh, very, very, very restructured. So we're not going to sit here anymore and go through an entire review of both shows. Uh, we feel like that's a, a little too long, and we kind of want to condense that into basically kind of. Uh, overviews of the show if that makes any sense and then basically what we're gonna do not on a weekly basis but sometimes and whenever it is uh appropriate myself and corporate cappy are going to rebook the episode of raw or smackdown basically how we would have booked the episode what kind of matches we would have had that night instead of the matches and stuff that we got during that show so that's how we're going to do the show from now on um the list of 10 is different basically we are going to have one superstar or two superstars each. One's going to make the list of 10 of the or the list for the week, so they're going to be the list superstar of the week, and one will be the perfect 10 superstar of the week. So we'll each have one when we get to that part in the show. Um and also we cut there to be headlines out. That's going to be its own show on Sundays when so the Sunday night heat podcast will solely be news-based. So that will be all the news will be every Sunday. I'll get an episode out for you guys. Um, but as for the lowdown show, that's basically going to be it. And we're going to do tweets after the raw and SmackDown discussion. So all your tweets will be read till then. They will not be at the beginning of the show anymore. We're still going to do Twitter fans of the month. We're still going to do Twitter fans of the year. Um, and as for the tweets, guys, I, I did tweet it. You guys, you know, you guys kind of missed it this week. That's okay. I'm giving you guys a, a pass. Like we give Monday night raw pass sometimes. Um, but from now on, no more thoughts. 
No more thoughts. We can uh, you can send your thoughts to our boy Michael Chow's podcast. That's how he does his podcast. But we're gonna do something different. Basically, for the tweets from now on, just send us questions. We're gonna give you a max of three questions to ask us for the podcast, and, and it can be anything. It can be Raw and SmackDown related, or it could be wrestling in general related. Three questions a week, and then we'll answer them after we talk about Raw and SmackDown on the show. So that's basically the whole restructure of uh, the Lowdown Show, and you need uh, to keep it fresh. Yeah, you need to keep it fresh. You know, keep it tightest. <laughs> Do a fresh with a tight brand. Yeah. <laughs> um, There's a much needed change. Also a change, a small change. Reviews after pay-per-views, when if they can be done, will be done solely by me on my own. Uh, got some great news by, for our co-host Cobra Cappy here. Yep. Got a big boy job, I guess I could yes, say. big boy pants, new corporate job. Got a new Monday. corporate job starting this Monday, and he's got to wake up Monday morning early as hell, so he won't be able to do the podcast Sunday late nights. I'll try to do, like, the big ones. I'll try to do SummerSlam, and I'll try to yeah. do Survivor Series. And, but but from now on, if I can do it and I don't work, I will be doing the review shows uh, solely by myself. Yeah. Even even uh, the Lowdown show, I might have to miss. Yeah. But so We'll see. See what happens with that, but um, there's a new series coming, so we got some more content being added to the podcast, and basically on our YouTube channel, and I'll get it on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher. Um, it's good. We're bringing back. Uh, well, I'm kind of bringing back a, th- a series we did back in the day, but it's going to be different. It was called Blast from the Past. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting in the year 2000. So I'm starting with the Royal Rumble 2000. And I'm going to be reviewing every pay-per-view going forward after that. So I start, I'm going to start at Royal Rumble 2000. I'm going to go over each match. I'm going to go over each feud leading into that pay-per-view. And it's going to just start from there and go on from there. So I'm starting at the year 2000. But that's going to be it. It's going to be called Blast from the Past. I'm going to try to get this episode out to you guys tomorrow, if not Sunday, with the Sunday Night Heat. So stay tuned. More content coming to the, the podcast. Yep. So, yeah. That's and, it. Uh... That's that's gonna be it. It's gonna be it. And my hiatus will start next week anyway. I mean, even if I didn't get a job, I wasn't gonna be here next week because I'm yeah. going to Michigan. For Michigan NASCAR. NASCAR. So I'm missing uh, Money in the Bank that weekend. I'm missing a lot of things. Red yeah. Fest in our local town. Yeah. Missing a lot of things. So, that's okay. Unfortunate. That's okay. Uh. So let's just get into it. Uh. God, raw. Complete trash this week. <laughs> Absolutely garbage, man. There's no excuse for what we got this week for Raw. That was bad. I'm telling you right now, there was only two good things out of a three-hour show that happened this week. Seriously, two good things. SmackDown was okay. It gets a pass, right? It wasn't the best. I mean, it only has two-hour shows, right? Uh, but it shouldn't be getting passes. No shows should be getting passes ever. You need to produce good product with the rosters you have. SmackDown is producing better product with the roster they have that's ten times better, well, sort of, than Raw. Except, I mean, you know, they don't include some superstars. Like, we're American Alpha, who's been missing since, I don't know, two months ago. You know, they're still in the milk carton. The milk carton's, like, old now. Some chunky-ass milk in that milk carton. They're still on it, though. They're still missing. It's just, it's okay. But that's okay. Right? Anyways, um... Let's just quickly go over Raw, man. Is at the Mohegan Sun Arena, Wilkes Bear, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Great arena, man. Both shows arenas this week were like in tiny ass AHL hockey arenas. Interesting. I remember back in the day, Raw would only go to like the big arenas. I never remember going ever going to like small arenas, like especially SmackDown this week was in Rochester. The small arena. That's a tiny arena. <laughs> Where the Amherst play. Yeah. I I mean maybe they did back in the day, but I don't know. I don't really remember that. Maybe it's just a kid and I didn't really pay attention to that. Now I pay attention more because I'm a podcaster, so I don't yeah. know. Um, but Raw, man, God, two things that ha- – the only two things that happened good on Raw this week were the Paul Heyman and Samoa Joe promo, and we got Goldust and R-Truth promoing each other more. Like, I'm more excited for that than Brock Lesnar coming back next week. How sad is that? And he's had – we're getting – I guess the milk carton worked for the Universal title because he's it's coming back next week. But uh, we opened with Bray Wyatt. And I don't care. I don't care <laughs> that we open with Bray Wyatt. You know why? Because it does nothing for me. Does it do anything for you? I, I love Bray Wyatt's promos, but we all know that they're going to lead to him losing. losing. He loses all the time. Why? Why do you even care about Bray Wyatt anymore? 
He was supposed to be the next Undertaker, for Christ's sakes, and they just make him lose at every WrestleMania, and they just bury him against any sort of competition he gets. Like, why do I care what he says if he's just going to lose every week? He's supposed they to be put him in God. terribly gimmicked matches, like at WrestleMania, with the stupid CGI crap, and we got the stupid House of Horrors that no one gave a fuck about. <laughs> I don't know, man. That was man. match just, of the year. God. But, of course, it interrupted by No Man Gains. They have a match, and then he gets buried by... Of course, is there any... Was there anyone out there that actually thought that Bray Wyatt was going to pin Roman Reigns? Nah, because, you know, Roman lost on Sunday, even though he didn't get pinned. So he's got to come back with a win on Monday, you know? But we have to, you know, but, of course, exactly. Like, Vince's boy took a loss. You know, we got to make him win. You can't go a week without Roman Reigns winning. I'm sorry, Juggy, but your guy just doesn't have to win all the time. But I guess he's on Raw. Raw Reigns always wins. It kind of makes sense, right? Fucking unbelievable. Um, we got some more of this Enzo and Cass kind of thing this week, too. Is that fucking... I don't know what the hell's going on. There's so many different people that could be now. I mean, they included Cringe Show this week into it. And even played like it could have been him. But this week we got Big Cass on the ground. And then he was holding Enzo's chain. And Enzo was kind of telling him, like, oh, look, look, man, this, I know you're holding my chain, but this doesn't actually mean it's me. Like, they kind of made it look like Enzo attacked Big Cass. I'm like, that's impossible. There's no way little Enzo Amore knocked out Big Cass and had him, th- all that heavy shit everywhere. There's no way. And Cass didn't see him? Come Everyone, on. <laughs> and Cass didn't see Enzo coming. I'm so sure. Unless they're going to do this stupid story where he paid Big Show to do it or something like that. <laughs> I don't think it, man. I guarantee you it's the revival. It's the revival. Let's stop being so, like, you know, oh, we got we got to get Enzo and Big Cass to split up, man. No, stop splitting up tag teams. You're already going to split the Hardys. Why would you split up these guys? You're going to have no tag teams left on Raw. You have three heel tag teams. God, it's terrible. <laughs> Oh yeah, Michael Cole is saying uh, perhaps Michael, Michael Shaw said perhaps uh, to Undertaker being retired. And Reigns said that uh, Rain, sorry, Cole said that Reigns perhaps retired the Undertaker at WrestleMania. I don't know if is Michael Cole botching and said perhaps by accident, or that was actually a real line written for him to say because maybe Undertaker is not fully retired yet. Maybe he even though he had the hip surgery, he's still good for one more match. And if they do that, man, just do it with John Cena. Help us all. Help us all get that unreal WrestleMania match that we're going to see next year, Undertaker and John Cena. That would make my entire weekend. Honestly, I'd love it. Um, but uh, the big cast thing. What? what why? Why would people think it's Enzo Amore? Are you guys <laughs> if high? Anything, I would. I would have rather believe that Cast just put all the stuff on top of himself than Enzo doing it. And knocked himself over, but they, they went like, to an extent. Like, they even put the bandages on him. Like, okay, it could, Big Cass could be faking it. I don't know. Well, we'll I really it. hope they don't split, man. And then we, um, I really, I, I love that we didn't get one thing on Raw, and I was scared we were going to get it when your girl was talking to Kurt Angle backstage, and she's like, I want to have a This Is My Life segment with my Alexa <laughs> Blit. Oh, my God. I love how they even said that that was the worst rated segment ever like Kurt Angle, they, they made Kurt Angle say that was the worst rated segment ever last week They're like I'm not gonna make you do that I would have loved an Alexa Bliss this is my life segment that would be the worst segment of all time no it wouldn't it would be just as bad as the one we got about it Bailey been fan- it would have been phenomenal can we she never ever like can we that. never get that ever again from anybody I don't care who it is okay we could have uh Nakamura do it I just don't know I actually don't have Nakamura do it that'd be the worst thing ever man <laughs> The artist. Oh, yeah, I have paintings of him everywhere. But yeah, it's funny that WWE just kind of like made fun of themselves from last yeah, week. Yeah, so it was the worst rated segment. Okay, Kurt, you're gonna, you'll be our scapegoat. You go out and tell everybody that we know it was bad. It's Finn Baylor. <laughs> yeah, Finn Baylor. Um, our boy Samson. I want to talk about Samson. Um, I know a lot of people on Twitter. I saw a lot of people on Twitter hating on Elias. How? I, I, some reason people say they don't see the money in him. I see the money in him. Guy is a genuine, he generates pure heat. Yep. And all he does is sing in the ring. With a guitar. It's and he sings gold. about the, the city. Like, that's. It's like Hollywood rock. That is a perfect heel. <laughs> Remember when Hollywood rock would come out and do his Yeah, rock and he's concert? got potential. He's got a good look. Guy is in great shape. Got a sick finisher. That guy's got a lot of he's potential got behind good him. good size, too. I think, I think he can be pushed seriously in the mid card. And if he's on SmackDown, I wouldn't doubt if he'd be pushed as a, a main eventer. Like, yeah, Elias Samson's got the package. Got potential. Then he got 
cringely interrupted by Ambrose. I don't even want to talk about fucking Ambrose, man. That was terrible. He's he's cringing me every single week, man. I can't I can't buy the whole lunatic fringe thing behind him, man. I can't get behind it. To me, it's just it's a waste. I can't. Do you think do you think a, a heel turn for Ambrose would help him? Probably. Um, so let's talk about one of the best things that happened on Raw, and that was uh, Heyman and Joe. That promo was sick. Oh, it was great. That was probably the most. Probably the greatest promo ever because Joe cu- cuts his promos. When he's serious, when he's cutting his promo, he's yeah. probably one of the best promo guys in the business. And you, know, you add Paul Heyman, you're equaling promo gold here. When you add two guys in the ring that can cut insane promos with each other, you know you're going to have a gold segment. Yeah, Joe saying um, he's going to that dark place to face yep. Lesnar. Yep. Uh, Samoa Joe looking more sinister, man. Yep. He even like he did the whole whisper thing to Paul Heyman, like whispering him like what he's going to do. To him, like that was, to me though, it kind of took away from what if you were actually at the event because you didn't, you couldn't hear what he was saying. I, I, I kind of wish, like for the people that were there, I wish that uh, him holding a mic and saying that stuff would have made more for the crowd there. I know everyone at home heard it because the camera was so close and the mic was so close, but I don't know. For, to me, like for the people there, I felt bad for him for not actually hearing what Joe was saying because what Joe was saying was insane. Yeah, and it just chokes the hell out of Heyman. When do saying, we ever see Paul Heyman get attacked? Yeah, he gets choked out like literally. Like I mean, he got speared by Goldberg. He gets punched. But... He gets speared, but he doesn't get like choked out like that. <laughs> That's, that was a first for that me. Was that was awesome. That was nuts. What a, what a statement by Joe, though. And that was probably one of the best things of Raw. Everything else was crap. Everything else was was rinse and repeat bullshit. We got the same feuds, the same matches. I thought an end of a paper would spark new things. No, no. We just hit the rewind button and went right back to the last paper and started there. <laughs> Terrible. And we had the Angle and Joe con- confrontation backstage. Kind of, I don't know if that's teasing a match or something. I'd love to see a Joe Angle match at SummerSlam. That'd be sick. Well, who knows if Kurt's cleared to nah, compete, but then like, Rollins comes in and says, oh, I'll fight him. Yeah, okay, something we already seen before, Rollins and Joe, for like the 800th time. Oh, great, I can't wait to see this main event tonight. I don't fucking know. Uh, but we've seen this for the last two months. Why would we want to see this again? Why not give us something new? No, we're going to give you the same bullshit we've seen everywhere. We got something new, but I didn't give a shit about that. We got shit. This is Cesaro facing oh Slater and Rhino. <laughs> Slater and Rhino lasted about two minutes on Monday Night Raw this week. They're our burial of the week, I think. It's Slater and Rhino. <laughs> along with Bray Wyatt. Unfucking believable man. These guys were the SmackDown, first ever SmackDown Tag Team Champions. They come over to Raw, and they're on main event and superstars every week. And, and we're going to finally put up... get a, a main... Uh, Ra- I Monday forgot they Raw even existed, man. I forgot they were in part of the tag team division. I had no idea they were still there. They're <laughs> useless. And the reason why the Hardys weren't on this week was uh, I was actually pissed at first, but I found out after that uh, Matt's at home. Uh, Matt's at home because Rebby's about to have her kid, and, and Joe obviously uh, his brother's going to be there by his side. I mean, they're really close family, so it, it's understandable. And uh, so. they did have the child. Today. Yeah. Oh, they had it today. Nice. Good for him. Congratulations Good for him. to Matt Hardy bringing another wonderful this soldier. soldier. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the 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 cruiserweight thing this week on Raw. Uh, it, it it sparked some. Okay, the only thing new we got out of all of Raw this week was the cruiserweight thing. <laughs> that was a fresh feud. We got TJP confronting Neville about his title shot, and then Neville saying, "Oh yeah, 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 I'll go talk to Kurt Angle about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go out have your match against Mustafa Ali." And again, Mustafa Ali, most underrated person, I think, in the 205 Live Division. You agree with me, too. Yep. Um, it's, just, it's very interesting. This led to a heel versus heel kind of thing because after the match, Nello came out and kind of denied it and said, no, nah, I can't give you your – Angle said, no, I can't give you your match. TJP got pissed. Like, we're going to go talk to him together. Gets jumped by Neville, and that leads to their match in 205 Live this week. And I didn't actually go see it. I meant to go see it. I did. Neville um, won. But before the match, Perkins, like, he, he didn't come out as a, he, as a face. He was like – Really? He said that, you know, I tried doing it for the fans the first time, and it didn't work. So, so it's heel versus heel. That's time. interesting. Something interesting in 205 Live. Who would have thought? And Neville won with the <laughs> Rings of Saturn. But yeah. it was a good match, though. Yeah. Um, Michael Shaw says it was pretty bad. I see why people are hating 205 Live now. Well, it's not their fault. It's because they're, the, they're, they're in a, the, the end of SmackDown where most of the casual crowd kind of peace. Yeah, the, the, the crowd did not get behind it whatsoever. They weren't cheering for anybody. Yeah, we say it like week after week. It's literally like a broken record. They'd be better at full sale on a Wednesday night after NXT or before NXT. Because then Plain NXT simple. is one hour, 
Two or five lives in one hour. There you go. Two yeah. hours on Wednesdays. Yeah. Uh, Krango pulled. There's a, the whole the, the, the whole they continue with the text message bullshit today or this week. Uh, the Kurt Angle and pulling Corey Graves aside and Corey Graves going back saying, I don't know what you're talking about. It was private. Don't need to oh, know. Let's about talk it. about Kalisto coming out. It's like, who the fuck cares about Kalisto? Yeah, Cor- Corey is like, oh, don't worry about it. Kalisto's coming out. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's just forget about you. Your intense conversation you just have with Kurt Angle about this text message that no one knows about. But no, we got to make sure we, we pay attention to Kalisto coming out and having a cringe match with the Titus brand that no one gave a fuck about either. Like, who cares? I don't want to talk about it. We're moving on. I don't care about it. Who cares? Because <laughs> Kalisto won again. He won again. Who cares about the Titus brand anymore? I'm done getting behind the Titus brand. I tried and it just doesn't and work. They, they had a press conference conference backstage charlie caruso was the only one in there she asked a question they said press conference over and left yeah there's no creative direction it's like when michael Ch- michael uh chow it's been cole just said in the chat no creative direction they don't they just throw it out there they don't care you know there's no creative direction when you see the same match three weeks in a row it's terrible um the mrs intercontinental championship celebration it was all right. The only thing I liked and found interesting was Maurice slapping him and walking away after Miz kind of tackled the grandfather clock and thought someone was in it. And the the dude with the bear yeah. outfit on. Oh my thought God. It was him. Like, I just like Miz being paranoid throughout the whole segment. Yeah. And then Ambrose ended up being the camera guy, taking yeah. all this stuff, taking his hat off. and It was all right. It was okay. It was okay. I just don't want to see this feud again. No. I, again, it's just, we're getting the same feuds we just had for the last two months. But not even that. Like, we had, you saw this feud on SmackDown at, yeah. before they moved over. It's just, I'm done with these two. Like, just, I like the feud, but it's just, it, it's They need a creative course. direction. They, Raw needs to start thinking, okay, guys, we need to start tra- changing things up again. I know. You're going to feed to the casuals, obviously, because they don't care. They can see the same feud eight times a year, and they just wouldn't give a shit about it. Because they wouldn't even know that's been going on for months But seriously, the demographic, I saw an article the other day for a wrestling fan, the age is is doubled already. So there's not going to be a 30-year-old casual fan. They're going to know the business a little bit, all right? They're going to know what's going on. (laughs) Like, people will start out as casual fans if they're, like, 30-year-old, but they're going to get a grasp of it in the year and say, especially, okay, like the, I, I don't want to see the same match eight times I've already seen last year, right? They want to see something yeah. new. Especially nowadays, it wasn't like back then where there wasn't any of this Twitter and social yeah. media stuff where you could find out information. Now you can find out everything. So you need to stop. Again, it's like, I bet you it's the creative team for Raw. It's so in the past. And Vince always has that in the past judgment call too at the end. So With Michael Hayes and Beaver yeah. Boy. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, I I really don't want to talk about it, but oh my god, yes! Why do you why do you like this? Because I love I love when he's Can on. Can someone TV. please tell me why the fuck we resorted to having Big Show on this show this week? <laughs> Can we yes. please someone out there please tell show... me what the reasoning was to have Big Show as Enzo Amore's partner and then pull off the most cringe big cast like promo I've ever seen talking like you straight out of Brooklyn. No, you're straight from the catering table. Get your fucking ass back there, Big Show. Get out of my get off my TV, get out of the ring. You don't need to be there because you know what he did? He buries the club. Him and Enzo bury the club. Unbelievable. Hey, the, I guess this uh the only reason see Chuggy, shut up. The Big Show does not create cash. He does. I I was He's supposed to say not. that. Big Show created he and does not. Big Show puts over the younger talent. Uh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> the only way I like this was because it made Cass jealous that Enzo teamed up with somebody else. Sure, but did you l- sit there and enjoy him trying to be like Big Cass? No. I was biting. I was cringing. I was literally, the ver- my hand was on the remote. I'm like, I have to switch the channel. Like, I have to, but he might punch out Enzo. I was really hoping for him to turn around and give Enzo a KO punch. And then be like, oh, maybe Big Show's the guy now. Like, oh, but it didn't happen. Big- we, we got another burial. We put Bray Wyatt in the freaking grave. We What do we put else in the grave this week? What, what, was, uh, what, was, what was the other person we put in the grave this week? Uh, Slater and Rhino is in the grave. Now we're going to put the club right on top and put the sh- put the dirt on top and, and what's going on with the bury club? it. Honest to God, they gotta go what with, the hell are they doing? I'd rather them be back in New Japan right now because they're useless right now. They need a leader like we always say. But it's not gonna happen. We we got the we we read the article saying that they're gonna look for a club reunion by the end of the year. But do we have to get a a, a six month worth of the club being buried? They were no. the champ, they were the raw tag team champions going into WrestleMania. Now they just lost a. They one need to be squash. looking strong to go into a club reunion. You can't make them look bad because then no one's gonna give a shit when they come back. Their whole WWE run has been a failure. They've been used horribly since they've come over, and they lose in one minute. Yep. 
the Big Show and Enzo promo things worse than Bailey's This Is Your Life segment, Michael Chow says. Thank you, Michael Chow. And then Thank backstage, you. we had Cass and Big Show stare down with yeah. Enzo. Like, I know Big Show is in shape, you know, great shape now, but he, honestly, I don't care what kind of shape he is. He needs to retire, man. He does nothing for the business for me. He just needs to go. You're taking time away from people. Just leave. Be a backstage role guy. Go to the Performance Center. Train people there. Train the big guys that come into the Performance Center who need help to be a big guy in the WWE. Don't go on TV and do a cringe promo with Enzo Amore. You're not from Brooklyn, Big Show. Stop it. (laughs) Enough of that. Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. Juggy says that the club's run is failed just like the Ascension's call-up run. Yeah, I remember when Ascension was dominant NXT, and now they're just... Dominant somewhat on main event or getting buried on main event. Dark match. There you go. Uh, you, uh, uh, I can't wait for Golas and R Truth to actually actually come to fruition. I can't you, wait. You for don't that. even care about R Truth. You just want to see Gold Dust. Gold Dust. Uh, and people are saying like, oh, I hope he comes out with the wig. I think he. I think or people are pissed that he's not wearing the wig in his promos. I think he. he that's for his entrance. He always comes out with it in the entrance. Yeah. So uh, but, your girl, your girl had a, a women's match. Oh yeah, women's for the title, title match because. Uh, she was talking backstage to Angle, and he yeah, said, well, you did promise Nia Jax a title match. Yeah. She's like, you promised her. Mm, I kind of did. Yeah. Uh, we got a Dana Botch sighting. She's fresh from her uh, I Botch a lot Academy days, and we got Mickey James got dragged into it for some reason. I don't know. They're trying to add more people to TV. I don't know. This was just ba- I hated this whole thing. It made no sense. The division <laughs> just doesn't make sense at all for me. Bailey's um, gone because she's apparently injured from taking one kendo stick to the so, back. So, yeah. She's Sick. gone. Sasha Banks wasn't on the show this week. Alicia Fox was gone this week. Like, just... Sasha st- had a stare down with uh, uh, oh, yeah. Alexa. In the okay, she had a quick part. Because then Alexa said, you know, wh- why Dana and Mickey, why are you letting Nia take your spot? So she's trying to like Turn them against Nia, and then they said, "Oh, we'll be at ringside tonight. Don't worry." Mesh sucked. I didn't care. He, she made herself get a DQ win. Cool. Yeah, she walked outside the rings, slapped him, and then they slapped her back, and she got and Nia Jax. There's no the lack of fight. direction. Where do they even go from here? Who like who cares? I don't care where they go from here because nothing is intriguing me. I think, I'm not intrigued for a women's title match at Great Balls of Fire anymore. I think Nia is gonna get a title match at Great Balls of Fire. And I don't care. You She's don't bad. Care. She's cringing the ring. You don't I don't care, care about Team Rude play facing each other. No. Why not? This Ale- a smart a... champion, Alexa Bliss, man, getting smart herself disqualified. Champion. Smart champion. God, what else is she gonna do? She's got no one to compete with on Raw. The people that she's competing with are Raw are not even on the show. And then what's going on with Bailey? I really hope that they take Bailey off for a while and then have her come back and like actually be a credible person that you can take seriously, not this not this kid crap. That I we're hope so. Her. They, oh, I don't know. Samoa Joe and Rollins had a match. It was okay. Again, it did nothing for me. It seemed... It, we just seen it too many times. Bray Wyatt distracts Rollins for whatever reason and costs him the match. Like, who, what and feud? Getting, are we having Wyatt versus Roman? Or are we having Wyatt versus Rollins? Or Wyatt, Wyatt versus Balor? Like, who are these feuds? Exactly. There's no direction. No direction. So Raw just completely sucked this week except for two things. It was bad. And where was Finn Balor this week? Yeah, where was Finn Balor? Oh, yeah, he appeared on the dark match. That's it. So he was there. But you make this guy appear in the dark segment. That makes sense. Sure. Since he's come back, he's been a failure, too. He hasn't done fuck all. Oh, man. They should... Okay, if we're going to talk about how we're going to rebook Raw or how we would have rebooked it, I think they should... This should have been the starting point for Wyatt and Balor. Wyatt and Balor should have started something this week. If you're going to make this a long feud and you're going to make it a good feud into leading to SummerSlam and the, the return of the Demon, you should have started this week. They should have, you didn't have to have them. You could, they could each had a singles match against someone and they could each have interfered in it. Or you could have had Finn Balor have a match with someone and Bray Wyatt cut one of his Titantron promos on him or something. Yeah, like why on Raw do we have to keep getting the stuff that we've seen left over from the pay-per-view? Why can't yeah. we just get new shit? Yeah, they, they, they kept the same five guys from the Fiddle Five and just kind of scrambling around. Okay, now we're going to have these feuds. Why can't they have feuds with someone else? Why is Roman facing Wyatt? Like, Made no sense. Roman, <sighs> Roman should have faced Finn Balor in my opinion and Wyatt should have interfered. And then starting the Balor and Wyatt feud. Yeah, why do we get Rollins and Wyatt now? I think, Why? in my opinion, and the people were saying it, I didn't really agree with it at first, and then kind of kind of went, okay, maybe they should do it just for the time being. Because Roman Reigns is not going to be in your universal title picture for Great Balls of Fire, they should have just started a four-week feud with Miz for the IC title. Roman Reigns should have been should have came out during the Miz's celebration and, you know, cut like a promo, like, I'm sick and tired of you out here, t- saying, like, you're the greatest champion, and blah, 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 and... 
know, they should have started something with that. I think they should have started something with the Miz and Roman Reigns this week. And then uh, I think they could. I think their next few should be Dean and Samson. Yeah, I think that should be a few. I thought that's what they were gonna do, man. They, there was like a hint, hints at it, but they just didn't do it. I think um, it would be good if Dean like came out one time and like hit Samson over the head with his guitar. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it could be a good feud. I would like yeah. that. So Wyatt and Balor, uh, Miz and uh, Reigns. I think we could have seen and, Samson and, uh, and Ambrose. Samson and Ambrose. We could have rebooked all that. They could have found a better partner for Enzo Amore, and maybe Enzo just went out there and tried to do it by himself and got his ass kicked. I don't know. And maybe he could. They could have done something like Enzo was just pissed that Big Cass was too hurt to come out and and uh, help his partner. Maybe and maybe you could have had. You could have teased more. It could have been Enzo attacking Big Cass. You could have come come back there and Big Cass could have like walked by Enzo walking to the back all hurt and, and then Enzo just kind of shrugs him off, right? Like acting like he's pissed off at him. But no, we had to include Big Show, right? Because that made sense. I just brought the ratings way up. And can we stop with the Titus brand versus Kalisto thing? Like, why can't why can't Titus why can and Apollo be on team up and do something? <laughs> why can't they be on Superstars? I don't want to see that on TV. <laughs> I want to wait two hours and then see that on my TV. No, that's making me fall asleep in the middle of Raw. Women's segment, honestly. I don't even know. I don't know what to do with the women right now. Honestly, me, I know it's a repeated feud, but I would like I would like what's going on now with Bailey being out of the title picture. I would have liked to see Mickey James versus Alexa. Mm-hmm. I would have liked to see that feud continue. Yeah. And then maybe Nia Jax gets some... I don't know. But I just don't know how Nia and Alexa is going to work. Because... How does Nia Jax instant title food because she got promised by the champion a title match? That doesn't make any sense. You're supposed to earn your way for a title Dana match. Dana Brooke needs to get off TV. Yeah, she doesn't need to be on TV. She needs to go. So that's basically that. So we could have rebooked Raw a little bit better. Raw this week was terrible. I don't know what else to say about it. It's bad. Bad. And now next week we get the return of the Universal Champion. Woo! Yeah, the carton worked. The milk carton worked. Yes. I guarantee you him and Joe don't even get in the same ring together. Yeah. <laughs> Chuggy, the Tice brand's going to be the new few, or the new shield. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's talk about SmackDown. We were, at, again, Rochester, a small arena. Uh, Blue Cross Arena. Yeah, home of the Rochester Americans. Yeah, your uh, Buffalo Sabres affiliate team. Yep. Um, SmackDown was okay. Okay, again, I, it got a pass, and it shouldn't be getting a pass. Um, one thing I want to point out, we, we included Mojo Rawley this week, but where the hell was Ty Dillinger again for, like, the fourth straight week? He was on the dark... Listen to this great dark match we had, okay? It was an eight-man tag. Oh. We had Ty okay. Dillinger, okay. American Alpha, and Luke Harper versus the great team of Eric Rowan... The Ascension, and uh, Aiden English. Are you serious? You know what that gets? <laughs> ah, it's getting crickets right now. Yeah, that great match. You guys all enjoyed that dark match. I'm sure oh, the man. crowd was booming for that one. Right at the beginning of the show, man. What a start. Unbelievable. What a way to, what a way to get the crowd into it, man. Un-freaking-believable. Four jobbers versus four guys that aren't used. Wow. I'm pissed that they're not including Dillinger, man. I, I really know. hope that they have long-term plans for him. Yeah. But right now, it seems like they did. Why would you call him up now? What was the point of calling him up? Why would right. you just If you're just going to stick him in dark matches, why don't you wait to get him called up? When, why wouldn't he continue his feud with Bobby Roode? Because right now, they had a Tommy against Bobby Roode, which was really weird out of left field. And now that's done. <laughs> yeah, now a, a Tommy's going to feud with... Uh, Cringe, uh, Orny, Orny Lorkin? Cassius, no, Cassius, oh no, oh no, get off. Oh, oh no, where's no. the remote when he comes on TV? <laughs> that guy's horrible. Uh, but if Taylor's not going to do anything, they should have just waited to call him up after SummerSlam. Seriously. God. It's not like they're using him now. What was the point? You pissed, killed this whole momentum. It pissed me off because he's our, he's our boy, man. It sucks. Um, so out of SmackDown this week, we got the the finally unveiling of the woman's Money in the Bank briefcase. I liked it. I like it, the It's the a white. nice, sleek look. It's a, I like the white with the gold, gold trim. trim. I like it. It's not pink like uh, a lot of people originally oh, thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's not the Divas era anymore, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I just hated that it... Oh, my God. We got the... we had Because it led into the debut of Lana, and oh, my God, man. As much as I love seeing mm, Lana... Lana. Mm. Oh, my Lord. Mm. Phenomenal. But, but it, yeah. Yeah. She's like if they had, like, a, a blender and they blended in Eva Marie and uh, the oh, Amelina yeah. gimmick and out, outshot Lana. <laughs> she had the whole kiss thing, and it was cringe as hell. Um, and the mic, she's okay. 
I still want to wait to see her in ring skill, and Naomi kind of called her out on it too. Because she's um, been working at the performance center, so I don't know what kind of yeah. in ring skill she has. Yeah. But I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. I want to see what she can do first before yeah. I completely criticize her and want her off. I thought team. we were gonna finally see her in a match, but we did. We had the Natty, Carmella, and Tamina face Naomi, Charlotte, and Becky. And God, oh, just who cares? Who actually cares about that? Like only we've seen this already a hundred million. Again, we see shit that we already seen a hundred million times. The only important thing was Lana came back and pulled Naomi yeah. and distracted her. So and Tamina won. <laughs> we're gonna get Naomi versus. Lana. Lana for the title, guaranteed a money in the bank. Yep. It's probably going to be announced next week on SmackDown the Go announced. Home Show. Oh, it was announced? Yep. Wow. But Shane, she originally asked Shane for it, yeah. and he said no. And then Naomi came in and yeah. says, no, I want it. Okay, mark my words. I'm telling you right now, this is how it's going to go. The first match of the night is going to be the women's money in the bank ladder match, and that whoever wins is going to cash in the same night. T- telling you right what, now. Ambrose style? Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to be the women's money in the bank ladder match, too. I can see it happening. Because whoever wins the men's one, they're going to carry it until WrestleMania. Um, But terrible segment. Yeah. (laughs) Michael Shaw, five women have been fighting the last two months for a title shot, and Lana gets an instant title shot. (laughs) That's what I mean. But I don't think she could be in a Money in the Bank for her first match. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I don't think Lana can climb a fucking ladder and do ladder spots. Do you think Man, she could do that? I'm scared that someone's going to get hurt in this ladder match. Ta, me, no. <laughs> probably. She'll probably, uh, no, she'll probably Samoan drop somebody off of it. I don't know. <laughs> um, God, Mojo and Shane backstage was probably oh. the worst thing I've ever seen. We get, this, we get the Andre the Giant Memorial <laughs> Battle Royale trophy. The, the trophy that literally does nothing for anyone who ever wins it. Unbelievable, man. I just didn't care, and it led into a match with Jinder Mahal. Where he lost in three minutes? <laughs> how the hell do you go with this guy back there? How do you go? How do you boost him up and it boosts up the trophy and have him lose in three minutes? Yeah. And then <laughs> he goes on talking smack and says, "You know, I just didn't get the job done tonight." Well, no oh shit. My God. Where have you been? Who cares? Who cares about Mojo Rawley? Honestly, I don't give a shit about him being the Andre the Giant Moral Battle Royal Trophy. God. Winner. That was the first time we saw the trophy since WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, Ziggler and Styles had a good match this week. I liked it. This was probably the only good match that I liked of SmackDown. Yeah. Although it was cut short again. Uh, this was actually I think okay, this they did this match because last they had okay, the reason why they had a rematch and I hate it when superheroes have rematches two weeks in a row. They had the reason why they had this rematch cuz they already supposed to have it because last week it was a botched finish. Because uh, AJ Styles was supposed to be rolled up and his foot was supposed to be on the rope. And the ref was supposed to miss it. And then Styles was supposed to challenge Ziggler to a rematch saying, look, you didn't win properly. Uh, my foot was on the rope, so you didn't actually beat me. And that's why Styles won in the match this week. Yeah. Right? Um, so, <laughs> do you think Rusev will be involved in Lana's title match in the chat? Michael Chow says. Mm, Hashtag oh, Rusev been... crushed the glow. <laughs> Rusev, I think, is too worried about his Predators, even though they didn't do too well last night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Fashion Files, The New Day. That was kind of funny. It's a good comedic relief, man. It's a good comedic for, for uh, SmackDown. The whole, like, Fashion File guys, are, are they're talking in their heads, and New Day can't, actually can't hear them. They're like, what the hell? Are these guys just staring at us and for? And they, they bring them new attire. Yeah. Um, oh, it actually, actually, t- actually fits pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it, it leads into go. New Day facing the Colognes. Sick. And they won. I mean, they have to look strong. Uh, the, the the Usos cut a promo on them. Sure, I actually like. I I kind of I know I, I can't wait for a new day and the Usos to to have a match with each other. That's I mean, one of the things I'm looking the forward Usos to. Usos cut a good promo. They called yeah. each each member out. Yeah, they're good. They they're doing this, this is the best work the Usos have done in a long time. And they said that this is the Uso Penitentiary. Now, are New Day gonna win on their first? No. Try. Do you think they're gonna no. win? I don't think they will. You think the Usos like yeah. pull it off? Since I won't be able to say my predictions, I think Usos are retaining. I think they're gonna win dirty over New Day. New Day shouldn't get the titles right away. Honestly, they should have to work for it. Yeah. They had the titles for over a year on Raw. They have to work for it on SmackDown. Yeah. <laughs> um, backstage, Sammy was having a promo about to be on commentary, so Sammy gets attacked again, and Corbin literally destroys him. I don't know if they're destroying Sammy every week to maybe lose his spot in Money Bank if someone's going to replace it. I don't know if, like, this coming... Uh, this coming SmackDown is a go-home show. So, uh, maybe they're... I don't know if, if Sammy's... If Shane's going to come out and say Sammy's, like, unable to compete, he's seriously injured, or he gets injured in the beginning of the show this coming SmackDown, they, they replace his spot. You know, pray to God it's Ty Dillinger, but... <laughs> either um, way, if they either got to suspend Corbin from it, 
Yeah. Or Zane's got to be unable to compete. Yeah. And then replace some of them. Like, they got to make it interesting. I think one of those things is going to happen for next week. That's just, I don't think it's just they're going to... Because what's the point of him attacking Sami Zayn last week? Every If week. nothing's going to come from it. He's been doing it for a month. Yeah. So, he ends up coming out for commentary for the main event. The main event was always Nakamura. Uh, good match. Not as long as I thought it was going to be. But I think they're saving most of that stuff because they're going to be fighting each other for like the next month and a half at live yeah. events. Um, the only thing is Owen's getting buried again. Yeah. Corbin with a huge... Yeah, he got buried again. He lost to Nakamura three weeks in a row. I don't know why they keep doing that. Once is enough for me. Three times. Like, I know Nakamura overkill. can't lose yet, but at the same time... It's a little Maybe overkill. Corbin could have came in and did the end of days yeah, to during Nakamura. the match yeah. so that Owen's didn't have to get buried again. Right. But that uh, end of days looked unreal. Because, huge statement by Corbin. <laughs> Nakamura, huge. He's got such lanky yeah, legs. And he's like sold when he the back shit from... <laughs> out of that end of days. And I'm telling you, end of days is the best finisher in WWE right now. That but is so sick. I love when Nakamura gets finishers done because he's just like such a tall, lanky guy, mm. and he it makes it look good when, when he came back for the end of days. It looks so good. Yeah. But I think Corbin <laughs> should have attacked him in the match so that Owens didn't get fucking buried again. Yeah. Uh, Mason, the chat, uh, milk carton for Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's at home with his kid. Yeah. Bree had a kid. You remember? <laughs> yeah. He's, That's he's understandable. Gotta be, he's got to be a good, a good brother, a good father. Got to be a good father. Got to be a good father. Uh, SmackDown was okay. I liked it. I liked it. Um, yeah. it gets a pass though. They shouldn't be getting a pass. They could have done a little mm-hmm. bit better. Um, I think the best part of all of SmackDown was, uh, <laughs> comedic relief fashion files. <laughs> Jinder Mahal and Rainer, I don't give a shit. I don't give a crap they're having a rematch for their WWE title. WWE title does absolutely nothing the, for the me. Maharaja. Both Money in the Bank briefcase matches are, are are more meaningful than their actual title match. I love how he cut a promo of, like, he was getting heat. Yeah. And then he <laughs> And then he started cutting his promo in Punjab. <laughs> to Like, as a face. Yeah. But honestly, the only good things I liked, I liked the rematch of Styles and Ziggler. The Owens-Nakamura match... It's okay, but I wish Corbin would have got involved so that Owens didn't get buried. I would have. That's how I would have rebooked that match. Yeah. Um, Zayn and Corbin. Someone needs to be get to get kicked off the Money in the Bank ladder match. And uh, I'm just really happy for the women, man. Honestly, and I'm I'm really sad that I'm gonna miss that match because I love the women so much. Yeah. And I like I I've been pushing for them to get a Money in the Bank match for so long. Yeah. Because I you know I I'm always for equality and why I want the, I want the women to be better than the men. I mean I, I who knows if it's ever gonna happen, but. I'm one of those guys that I want the women to, to outshine the men. but yeah. So I'm sad I'm going to miss that. Should be a good match. Other yeah. than that, SmackDown was meh for me. Yeah, it was, it was okay. The Fashion Files was good, but yeah. <laughs> at the same time, that shouldn't be the best segment of SmackDown. No, it shouldn't. It's got no excuse. The, for the the roster you have, again, I'm saying, you, you need to make you start making good product for us to even say it's a good show. It was a meh show. Um, we yeah. better rate them. I don't, do we still even continue to rate these shows? I always just continue to rate them. I'll give Raw a 2 out of 10. I'll give SmackDown a f- 5 out of 10. Half score. I'm giving Raw a 3 because Alexa's a smart champion. Wow. And I'm giving SmackDown a 3.5. Wow. Wow. I didn't like SmackDown this week either. Yeah. But it, it it was more watchable than Raw at least. Yep. Yeah. That, that's all I can say about it. Yeah, so before we get into the tweets, we'll quickly do our list of 10 segments. So let's hit that list of 10 theme. 10. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's going to happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to the list of 10. The newly revamped list of 10 where myself and Corporate Cappy have our list uh, or have our 10 superstar of the week and our list superstar of the week and we'll start off as always like we did in the previous show with corporate cappy start off with the list superstar of the week for me it's got to be mojo raleigh honest to god this guy hasn't been on tv in how long actually sorry he beat jinder when he first debuted on smackdown when no one cared and he won the andre the giant memorial battle royal no one cares about that either it didn't lead to a title shot didn't lead to anything didn't lead to a push and he comes back this week with the t- with the the trophy, like we cared, and says that he wants a match with Jinder, gets beaten in three minutes, and then says I'm talking to him like, oh, I dropped the ball. Well, no shit, you dropped the ball. You haven't been anywhere for two months, right? <laughs> so Mojo Raleigh, you know what? You know what? You just made the list. <laughs> yeah. Why do I care about Mojo Raleigh? I, no one cares about. Him. No one should. He just come back. What Zack Ryder's done doing his Z True Hollywood comeback story. He should just redo the hype, bros. 
Because that's the only way I'll care about Mojo Rawley is if he's yeah. with Zack Ryder. Yeah. Um, go to my list superstar of the week, and you're gonna you're gonna love this. Uh, God, my list superstar of the week is the Big Show. Shocker. Would you please never, ever, ever come back to TV and do something like that again? Straight cringe and straight dumpster fire. Unbelievable, man. To cut a promo like Big Cast and to do a fake Brooklyn accent, I couldn't. Oh my God, that was that that belonged in the PG era back in 2009. That was god awful. And for that Big Show. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah. Come on, man. Why do you got to be mad at corporate show like that? Because he, he brings a lot to the TV show. He brings a lot to he television. Just, he brings shit all to the TV show. Get he your 10. Over, Who's your 10 superstar? Time. I don't care about the big show anymore. Give me your 10 superstar. My 10 superstar is the big show this week. No, it's okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> My 10 superstar is Samoa Joe. What okay. a week this guy's had. Yeah. He wins the, the Fatal Five way at Extreme Rules, becomes the number one contender. And then this week, cuts a great heel promo. Probably one of the better hero promos I've seen in a few years where he actually, like, had me feeling like, wow, this guy is, he actually compete with Brock Lesnar. When was the last time we could hear someone say that? Yeah. And he made himself look believable that he could go to a dark place and be, and be this conniving person to beat. It looks like Brock's going to be the heel for this, or the, the face for this match. Wow. Because he attacked Paul Heyman. When was the last time we saw anybody choke yeah. out Paul Heyman? <laughs> and he did it in, in a cynical you know, conniving way, and he told Paul Heyman what he's going to do to him before he did it. I, I loved every minute of it, and Samoa Joe this week, it definitely gets a... Yeah, and I'm glad we're going to see, we're finally going to get a universal title showing. Honestly, I would, I would want, I want Joe to win this match. That'd be Honestly, sick. God, I want Joe to just get that title off of Lesnar, because he does nothing with it, he's been gone Joe for Joe would be months. a sick universal champion. He'd be unreal. Like, and, and, because I don't want Joe, Joe deserves so much better than being a one-off pay-per-view guy. Yeah. He deserves way more than that, so yeah. honestly, I want Joe to win the title from Lesnar. My 10 superstar of the week is Kevin Owens, my boy Kevin Owens. <sighs> uh, wow, that's a shocker. Was right? wrestling with a broken finger, though. Okay, and he says, instead of being out on the shelf like most people will, he is going to continue to wrestle with that broken thumb. Unbelievable, man. That's a, that takes a lot of heart to wrestle with a broken thumb, man. I know it's not, a lot of people say you know, a lot of people can do it, but you know what, Kevin Owens, I know you're getting buried, but I, I'm glad you're still going to stick to it and get and, and fulfill the live events that you're scheduled for and wrestle with that broken thumb, man. It's, it's a lot of dedication, man. It's a lot of dedication to, to do that, so... Just for that, Kevin Owens, you get my perfect superstar of the week. Yes. <laughs> There's like a, something going on in the chat. Michael Chow's flipping out over the Battle Royal and the Gronk thing. <laughs> but yeah, it was for the casuals. I agree, Ty, that yeah. it was for the casuals. But now it just means nothing anymore, right. obviously. Uh, I want to give a, um honorable mention to uh, God Roderick Strong on NXT. Cut a good promo this week, Oh. and he is seems like he wants to be next in line for Bobby Roode's title. Hmm. Came out and cut a promo that didn't really get over with the crowd, but I enjoyed it. It was basically saying he's happy everyone's gotten behind him with the vignettes that he's had, and he wants to show his family that he can he can come out against Bobby Roode. <laughs> Bobby Roode came out fake crying, Yeah. and I think it's going to be a good match, a good feud. Yeah. Um. So we're getting to the tweets, guys, and I'm going to read them out this week, but this will be the last time I read anyone's uh, thoughts. I just want questions. So starting next week, I want questions. Three max. Just give us some questions to, to answer. So I'll still read your thoughts this week. I'll honor that. Give you guys a pass. The tweet does say, what are your questions? It doesn't say, what are your thoughts? Just, just point that out there. <laughs> so we'll start with our Twitter fan of the month. And that is Tyler Jones. Tyler Jones. Tyler says, Jones. Tyler Jones. Yeah, sorry, he doesn't like when we say that. Tyler Jones. Yeah. Am I saying that right? <laughs> One half of the Bucks of Smash. Uh, he puts, who's the best brother? <laughs> Obviously, it's Braun Strowman, if you listen to Talk and Shop podcast. Yeah, Braun Strowman's the best brother. That guy, that guy, that guy's a good brother. That was hilarious. If you guys haven't listened to that, it, it's basically Talk is Jericho, but it's like, they're literally in a hotel room just sitting around drinking beer. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's it's Jericho with the club, Gallows Anderson, and they used to have a rotating fourth every time. And they had Enzo uh, Styles, but the best one was Strowman by far. Yeah. It was like an hour and a half of just 
pure just yeah them i just could sit there and listen to the ass. whole thing over and over again it was so funny go listen to it if you yeah haven't. that's a plug right there from yeah. jericho ty, ty jones in the chat puts i'm the best brother <laughs> No, okay. But uh, he, he does give us another question. Your thoughts on the berries of uh, Raleigh and KO. KO, great brother. He Raleigh, is a good brother. KO Raleigh, is a good brother. I don't care about. Raleigh's not a good brother. No, absolutely not. Raleigh's Kevin a Owens, broski. And Kevin Owens, like we said in, in the review, he shouldn't have got buried by Nakamura every single week. Yeah. Like, I know they're trying to build Nakamura, but at the same time, Owens is your U.S. champion, which it seems like the U.S. title is above the world title right now, which yeah. is bad. And you're having him lose every week like that. Corbin should have just it pissed me off that KO was getting buried. I mean, he's the U.S. champion losing three weeks in a row. How is that a... And that's basically your number one title because the Derby title is not your number one title. Nope. No, for sure it's not. Yep. You have Borington trying to go for it. You know it's not your number one title. <laughs> I would love to see somebody cash in the money in the bank on the U.S. title. <laughs> oh, God. That'd be hilarious. I wonder if that'll happen. That's interesting. I think if Zayn won, he'd cash in on Owens. That Oh, man, that'd be sick. Can you imagine he holds it till Rus- I don't know, but Owens wouldn't hold the title to WrestleMania. That'd be a long title reign. <laughs> um, let's get into the other uh, the other half of the, the Bucks of Smash. That is Trey Patterson, at Trey Patterson on Twitter. He puts, both shows suck this week. It's the same rinse and repeat garbage every week. Samoa Joe and Miss segments were good. But it doesn't make, and I go to his number two, make up for the horrible, or the, how terrible the other 2.5 hours were. Trash. Raw gets a three. SmackDown Live was just as bad, if not worse. I'm sick of seeing the same matches every week. You, know, you and us both, Trey Patterson. Uh, not to mention, KO lost again. Yep. Only high point was the Fashion Files. One out of ten, you gave SmackDown. Wow. <laughs> as for the question... Of the current contestants, who do you want to see win both Money in the Bank matches and why? All right. For the men's, I'm going to say Baron Corbin just because I'm in, I'm a huge Baron Corbin fan. I'm, a, I'm going to pick the bias pick even though my boy Kevin Owens is in it too. I think Baron Corbin is just the, the most likely guy to win it here and to he carry it. He's going to get a He's, major push at some point. Yeah, and I think it just makes sense him winning and holding on to the briefcase. I'm hearing rumblings of Nakamura winning it and then him cashing it on Styles eventually when he becomes champion. So who knows? We'll see. But I'm going to stick with my guy Corbin. Uh, as for the women's, I want my girl Carmella to win, man. Out of the five that are in that, Carmella just seems like the most likely one to win it, man. I don't see Natty winning it. I do not see Tamina winning it. I do not see uh, Charlotte winning it. Even though a lot of people are like, oh, it's going to be Charlotte. Becky's not winning it either. It's going to be Carmella. Carmella just, it makes more sense. I can see them doing something with Ellsworth along with it. I don't know. I just, maybe Ellsworth's like the official holder of the briefcase. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I just see her winning. I think she she deserves to win. I, I just, my, I'm going with the bias picks here and I'm picking Carmella. Men... I'm going with the off the map pick. I'm saying that either Zayn or Corbin is going to get taken out of the match, and Rusev's going to come in and win it. And win it? Oh! Yep. I'm picking. I'm picking uh, Ruru, handsome Rusev to come back. Ruru. <laughs> I'm picking Rusev for the men. Rusev on Twitter. Yeah. He's now I think Rusev. Rusev deserves a big push on SmackDown when he finally yeah. debuts. Rusev. He's now he changes his name to Rusev. <laughs> Rusev. <laughs> for the women. I don't care. Like, I care about the match. I don't care who wins, to be honest. I just wanted to see the match. Give me my, yeah, pick my girl Carmella, man. She's going to win. No, I'm picking Ellsworth. It'll be F-A-B-U-L-O-U-S. You know what? Just for the sake of picking, I'll take the Robo Charlotte. <laughs> I'm going to win the Money in a Bank remake. I'm going to climb up that ladder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take Robo Charlotte for uh, winning yeah. it because, honestly, yeah, uh... who else looks credible but her? Trey Powers, but this is an accurate representation of how I feel about my responses. Is Miz freaking out on talking smack? I'm, I, but I'm really sad I'm gonna uh, miss the women's match. But I'll, I'll take I'll take Robo yeah. Charlotte. Next set of tweets come from Glorious Greg at xgilly929. He puts, "How did you guys feel about Samoa Joe choking out Paul Heyman? And honestly, the whole Graves and Angle storyline might be somehow connected." I loved the mm. Joe and Heyman segment. It was my ten moment this week. I don't know if it's connected to Samoa Joe and Paul Heyman. Um, I think it's connected to... I think it has something Steph. to do with uh, Stephanie McMahon and her finding out something about critting or whatever it is. Um, um, I love Samoa Joe choking out Paul Heyman. That was 
something unexpected, something different for Raw, you know, a fr- something fresh. And again, look, you produce something fresh, people want to see it. If people agree with it, people love it. And I want to see what Joe does next week, you know? Right. Um, Michael Chow had an interesting creative, I don't know, I guess you could say storyline with the whole Graves and or Angle thing. He thinks that Stephanie and Graves are in cahoots. Oh, yeah. And that Stephanie's going to make Graves the new GM of Raw oh. and try to get Angle fired. And then he thinks that Angle will go to SmackDown when Daniel Bryan leaves and become the SmackDown GM. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. That's a good um, prediction there by Michael Chow. Yeah. Glorious Greg plus two. Enzo being attacked, what do you guys think? Enzo being attacked. It was Cass that got attacked this week. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's a th- oh, I think of that. I don't know. I'm still going with my boys' revival. As long as it ends with the with them not breaking up, I'm okay with it. Yeah, if I, it ends with Cass being the one, I'm just going to be I'm gonna be, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to care anymore. I don't know if I want to talk about it. And, I don't want to see those two guys yeah. feud. He put Raw was mad this week. I'll probably give it a five. But SmackDown I enjoyed, to be honest. How'd you guys feel about Lana joining the SmackDown Women's Division and getting a shot at the title? I'm not going to shit on her yet till I yeah, see what she's Yeah, we have to see it. Again, it's one of those things where we have to see her wrestle to, to judge her. Because right now... But, but I, I don't like how her first, first match yeah. is a title match. How does her first match... Right. It's gonna be a title match. That's, that, that's of, what blows my mind. I hope she has a match next week just to kind of prove herself. Please. Yeah. That way I can I can see if uh I would have liked the match or not. Yeah. But don't 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 count that he she actually doesn't have one next week. So <laughs> just saying. Um. Next set of tweets. Casey Salvis at Salvis ninety four. Oh, Raw was garbage. Don't understand why Reigns won again. Ridiculous. Boo it again. And of course can't wait to boo him when I go see Raw in Toronto. Yes, we can't wait for that either, Casey. Excited for Lesnar versus or Lesnar versus Joe. Hope he wins the belt. Lesnar makes that title useless, and we do not need another part-time champion. Lesnar should work more dates, or WWE should just terminate his contract. Well, it's a little hard to do. His contract is pretty uh, uh, set in stone. <laughs> it's, it's a really insane contract. Yeah. Nobody would care. Raw, 3 out of 10. SmackDown was okay. Don't want to see the New Day win the tag titles unless they're heels. Nobody cares about Mojo Rawley. <laughs> Can WWE just release him already? <laughs> Strong this, opinion. This guy's this an guy. embarrassment. Also, one of the worst wrestlers in the world. I actually, would not mind if Rain speared him. That would be great. <laughs> if Rain speared who? Mojo Rawley. <laughs> <laughs> great. Brazongo segment was again uh, fantastic. Great. Or can't wait to s- for both ladder matches. Hope Natalia and Corbin win. Ooh. I've heard Natty's and been please a dark not horse. Tamina. <laughs> I've heard Natty's been a dark horse. That people have been picking yeah. lately because she hasn't. Last time she held a title was like 2011. Yeah, it was a long the, time with ago. With the Divas title. And he put SmackDown 4 to 10. Also, hope boring Orton goes away for a while and he's got freaking SpongeBob going boring. <laughs> thank you, Casey. Oh, thank you, Casey. Next set of tweets Juggy Badass. That is oh. Zazel YT. The big dog is back. Myself and Mrs. Juggy have been busy moving in our new house. So sorry I haven't been here to receive the hate. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, he puts also, but on to my thoughts. Raw sucked. SmackDown sucked. Extreme Rules sucked. Why am I even paying for cable anymore? <laughs> Agreed. Uh, these feuds have mo- these feuds have me more and more confused. There is no logic behind them anymore. Hey, these two aren't doing anything, so let's put them in three month feud with no payoff. <laughs> Derby is now officially WCE World Cringe Entertainment. <laughs> it's like the, the the second half of the cruiserweight division. They're fighting for nothing. Yeah. Raw gets a 2.5. Smackdown gets a 2. And he puts, now, can we all pray to wrestling Jesus so Bugs and Vinny have a stroke and so Triple H can finally take over and produce a real show? <laughs> I think the real shield is Michael Hayes, oh. Man, and Kevin Dunn. I think that's the real shield backstage. The shield yeah. that matters. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. We'll go to our Twitter fan of the year's tweets. That's right. It goes to Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV on Twitter. And he gets a theme song before his his, uh, tweets get read on the show because he won our 2016 Twitter fan of the year. So it's TJ Perkins. TJ Perkins theme. And if you want to win yourself a theme song before your tweets, all you have to do is win Twitter fan of the year. And you'll win it for 2017. You'll get your theme song for an entire year. And it will get a theme song before we read your tweets. So 
And speaking of Michael Chow, he's got his own wrestling podcast. Go check him out at Michael Chow TV, WMCTV with the hashtag. He's also on Spreaker, so go check him out. He does an awesome wrestling podcast as well. Our fellow podcasting buddy in the wrestling podcast world. So go check him out and give him a follow. Um, he puts Raw and SmackDown live. This is your <laughs> Raw and SmackDown life. This is your life. <laughs> Raw was 3 out of 10. We keep seeing the same wrestlers and same matches. This is why Extreme Rules wasn't good. If you have the wrestlers in a pay-per-view fight each other over and over again, when pay-per-view comes, no one cares because they've already seen it. <laughs> You've got the Peter Griffin. Who the hell cares? Roman beats Bray, but then Bray goes after Seth. <laughs> Dana and Mickey stand behind Nia after Nia just attacked both girls at ringside? What the hell? <laughs> SmackDown Live, 3 out of 10. Okay, so this was my exact reaction to Emma Lana coming back and getting an instant title shot for nothing. You know, someone going, uh, <laughs> interesting gif. Uh, SmackDown Live is becoming the land of handouts. It's killing the show. Mm-hmm. At this rate, just give a WWE World title shot to James Ellsworth. Yes! No! No! Any man with two fists can fight a steroid man. Any man with two fists can punch James Ellsworth in the face. How about that? Uh, question. Should KO have been in the Money in the Bank ladder match? If he wasn't, would he have picked who would who would you have picked to face him? My pick would have been Mojo Riley or Ty Dillinger. Well, I guess Mojo Riley kind of it would make sense for him yeah. to get one since he hasn't done fuck all. Yeah. Went in the, I think the Andre the Giant Moral Battle Royal should like get you like at least a mid card title shot. I th- honestly that would be cool. Mojo Riley and, and Kevin Owens like you can have like. Kevin Owens, I mean, man, you're like nothing. You're like your your scum, and he ends up earning a U.S. title match, and then he gets under Kevin Owens' skin, and they could potentially have a semi decent match at Money in the Bank. So, I, if Kevin Owens was in the Money in the Bank ladder match, I'd say pick Mojo. I don't think Ty Dillinger. I don't think I can see a few there just yet. Although I'd love. I don't know if I could handle a KO and Ty Dillinger feud. <laughs> um, those guys. But honestly, the, the the trophy needs to be worth something. Yeah. A mid card yeah. title shot at the very least. At the very least, yeah. Because especially, what, cause what did he do this week? He got jobbed by Jinder. <laughs> Don't hinder Jinder. <laughs> wow. Yeah, three-minute match. <laughs> Unreal. Oh, unbelievable, man. That's nuts. But, uh, that's going to do it. That's the show. That's the new restructured lowdown show. Yep. Uh, and, guys, that's what it's going to be like every week here on the show. So thank you for your tweets out there. Thank you for supporting us in the chat. And thank you for the continued support. Go on YouTube, hit that like button. If you guys are new and listening right now, give us a subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. But that is going to wrap it up for week number 10 of the Lowdown Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian WWE podcast that discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash nhbwr or on the spreaker app available for all android and apple devices after we are done recording this podcast will be posted in full on spreaker itself on our youtube channel youtube.com slash nhbwr and also on itunes and stitcher radio you'll follow the podcast on twitter facebook and instagram by searching up no holds barred wp all links will be down in the description below on our youtube video of the podcast i am your host the self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters and every week, I continue to be joined by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Yep. And as always, we're always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. <laughs> You're looking at the real deal now. Woo! Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> that what you got?